Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. Gary LaFontaine's sparkle pupa is one of the most effective trout flies ever developed. The translucent sheath over the dubbed body resembles the gas bubble that natural caddis pupa use to help them float to the water's surface, while the CDC resembles an emergent wing. This sparkle pupa begins with a size 12 hook. Make sure the hook is well secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Then load a bobbin with the spool of dark brown unithread. Get the thread started a little more than one third of the way down the hook shank. It's very important that the front third of the shank remain bare. After taking a few reps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Continue taking thread wraps rearward all the way to the start of the hook bend, then back up to the initial tie-in point. Snip an inch-long segment of the chartreuse zelon free from the hank. Place the snipped off end of the material on top of the hook shank at the location of your tying thread and begin taking wraps to secure it. Use your thumb to push the material down evenly on either side of the hook. Continue taking rearward thread wraps as you do this. Wrap back to the start of the hook bend. Take tight wraps of tying thread forward and back to make sure the material is really well anchored to the hook shank. End with your tying thread in front of the hook point. Pull a small amount of green dubbing free from the packet. You don't need much. Use the dubbing to create a slender two inch long noodle on your tying thread. Start taking wraps with the noodle to build up a bright green body on the fly. It should end at the initial tie down location. Now, here's the important part. Make open spiral wraps up the hook shank with your tying thread ending at the back edge of the hook eye. Separate the chartreuse zelon into two halves on either side of the fly. Then pull just a small amount of material rearward. You don't need much, just a wisp. This will represent the trailing shuck of the pupa. Pull the remaining material forward equally on either side of the fly. Keep pulling the material forward until it's well past the hook eye. While holding it in this position, take just three or four thread wraps to lightly keep it there. Then, pull back on the forward pointing portion of the material to gently inflate the sheath around the body of the fly. Take tight thread wraps to hold the material firmly at its new rearward tie down point. Snip the excess zelon off close as well as any errant fibers. Take thread wraps to really lock everything in place. Snip the trailing material off so it's about a hook shank in length. Ideally, the sheath should completely encircle the underbody of the fly. Once the sheath material gets wet, the darker dubbing beneath will shine through in a very natural manner. For the emergent wing of the fly, pick up one of the CDC feathers and pull all the fibers up to the tip. Align the feather's tip with the back edge of the hook bend on top of the fly and take tight wraps to secure it there. Trim the butt ends off at a shallow angle. Take thread wraps to ensure the slippery CDC is locked down and to create a head on the fly. To make this head area look more natural, pull just a small amount of dark brown dubbing free from the packet. Use it to produce a very slender inch and a half long noodle on your tying thread. Start taking wraps with the noodle to create a lightly tapered head on the fly, like so. You can then reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. Finally, apply a drop of head cement to the exposed thread wraps behind the eye and your green sparkle pupa is ready to fish. The fly might look a little funky, but this pattern has been a top producer for decades. Give it a try, you won't be disappointed.